Hi, my name is Manu Alikani. I am Dean and Professor at Citor Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of Citor channel. The topic of today's discussion is application of the V-band in 2x4 setup. What is 2x4 setup? Well, it's a very common orthodontic setup. You have two bands on the molar or two brackets on the molar, and you have four brackets only on the four anterior teeth. It's used most of the time in phase one treatment or sometimes in adult when we want to address the vertical dimension of anterior segment, correction of deep bite or correction of open bite. And today I want to discuss what would be the forces and moments that appear in our system when we connect the back teeth to the front teeth with the straight wire, uh, whether it is round or rectangular, or when we're adding a V-band. Today, we're going to focus on the round wire. Next time, we talk about the characteristic of rectangular wire, and you will see the difference. So let's start with a very simple system. Assume I have a flexible wire, for example, 0189 high, and I connect it from the molar to the anterior teeth. What do you expect to see? To simplify the system, assume that there is a vertical discrepancy between the posterior teeth and anterior teeth. There is an open bite or there is a deep bite. So the molar and the anterior segments are not in the same level. Now, if you put a wire between the back teeth to the front teeth, you will see the wire will curve. And based on the vertical position of the anterior teeth, you may have extrusion or intrusion force on the anterior teeth. For example, in this case, we have an open bite. And when I'm extending the wire from the molar to the anterior teeth, the wire bends. The wire wants to go back to its original position. You're expecting the wire to produce an extrusion force on the front teeth and intrusion force on the back teeth. The forces are equal and opposite in direction, therefore they are in equilibrium. But if you look at the pictures, you notice that this intrusion and extrusion on the wire produce a couple. And for the system to be in equilibrium, there should be another couple in our system. Can you guess where the other couple is? This system looks like two couple system in this dimension, but it's mostly behaved like a one couple system. Can you guess why? Yes. The round wire in the molar produce a couple, but the round wire in the third dimension does not produce a couple. If you remember from the few session that we talk about the couples, we explained that the round wire are not able to produce a couple in the third dimension because they cannot touch the bracket in two points opposite of each other, but in the two different line of action. So round wire cannot produce a torque on the anterior teeth cannot produce a couple in anterior teeth, therefore cannot produce a moment in anterior teeth. So in this dimension, the round wire act mostly as a one couple system. Only in this dimension. In this picture, as you can see, the only place that we can have a moment that contract the moment of the couple in the wire, that would be the moment that appears on the molar. Because that's the only place that we have two contact point. And instead of night high, if you're putting 018 stain, it's still a rigid wire, and still you have the same position, you will have exactly the same force system. The only thing, the magnitude of the forces are increasing because the rigidity of your wire increased. The, the wire produced more force. If you put O2O, 0, even the magnitude of the forces goes up more. Now, what happens if we are adding a V-band to our round wire? Again, Assume I'm extending my wire from the molar to the incisors, and I decided that the amount of the force that I am seeing if I'm just putting a straight piece of wire, the wire is not getting really activated, so there is not that much intrusion force on the anterior teeth. I like to increase it. What would be the solution? Well, I like to put a V-band. Why? Because when I'm adding a V-band, the end of the wire goes more gingival. If I bring it down to engage it on the central, it produces intrusion force, and therefore I can address the deep bite. Where would be the nice place to put the V-band? Should I put it close to the molar? Should I put it between or should I put it close to the incisor? If you remember from the one couple system, we said that the, if you are having a one couple system, changing the position of the V-band only change the magnitude of the force. It does not change the direction of the force or direction of the moments. 
So if I'm putting the V-band close to the molar, I'm expecting intrusion force on the incisors, extrusion force on the molar, and a clockwise moment on the molar. On the other hand, if I'm putting the V-band in the center, it again acts as a one-couple system. It does not act as a two-couple system. It will produce an intrusion force on the anterior, extrusion force on the posterior, and a clockwise moment on the molar. The only difference is that now the wire is not as activated as before because the wire doesn't extend gingivally as much as before. I'm assuming you put exactly the same magnitude of the V-band, of course, uh, between the first example and the second example. What happens if you're using exactly the same magnitude of the V-band and now you are moving your V-band close to the incisors? The magnitude of the forces start to decrease more. However, the direction of the moment stays the same. So you have an intrusion force on the anterior, extrusion force on the molar, and a clockwise moment on the molar. Before I started to talk about three-dimension analysis of this setup, I wanted to talk about one more thing. You have an extrusion force. That extrusion force that produced by your wire, if you look at it from the frontal view, if you're looking at it from the transverse dimension, it does not pass through the center of resistance of the molar. Therefore, it should produce a moment in the system. This moment does not appear because of the wire itself. In another word, the wire does not know what is the inclination or center of resistance of the tooth. But because the force does not pass through the center of resistance of the molar, another moment appears in the system that likes to tilt the molar volatilely. How about the incisor? Again, force does not pass through the center of resistance of incisor. Therefore, a moment appears that likes to procline the anterior teeth. Remember, if the inclination of the anterior teeth was different in the different patient, the same setup can produce a different magnitude of the moment on the anterior teeth. And this is not part of your one couple system. The system only produces intrusion. However, the relationship between the intrusion and the central incisors or anterior teeth can produce additional moment in your system. That is not part of the equilibrium and you need to analyze it differently. But why I'm insisting that this is not one couple system? As I said before, in one couple system, we have only one attachment and one contact bone in one segment like a button and two contact bone in another segment like a molar. In this system, the molar part has two contact points, but the anterior teeth, if I rotate my system and look at it from the front, for simplicity here, we eliminate the laterals from the two by four setup, so it looks like a two by two setup. If I'm looking at it from the front, you notice something is that actually the wire in the front contact the brackets on the central in two contact point. So when the intrusion force and extrusion is applied to the system, we have two contact points in the front and we have two contact points in the back. So in the frontal part, it looks like a small two couple system. To understand the magnitude of the forces and moment there, let's eliminate half of the picture and just look at one half of it. Yes, if you look at the one half, you can clearly see in this dimension, also there is an intrusion force and extrusion force that acts as a couple on the wire. But because now we have a two uh, attachment on the front and the back that make two contact point, you have a two couple system in this system. So it is not really one couple system as we assumed before. However, most of the time, this two couple system is negligible, means that the forces and moment that produce is not really affecting our system significantly. But they are there and they can change the inclination of your teeth. So for example, the incisors that you have here, depends on where the V-band in this two couple system appears, can produce clockwise or counterclockwise moment that can change the inclination of the root of the incisors or the molar. To better understand where this two contact point appears, look at this picture, you can see that the wire cross also obliquely the molar tube, therefore we have two contact point or a couple appears in the system in the frontal view. And of course in the incisors is more clear because the wire cross the brackets in the frontal view and you can see the amount of the moment that appear in the system. And depends on the location of the V-band, uh, the magnitude of this moment can increase or decrease or change even direction. In general, any times that you have two by four setups, 
and you have a round wire, you can treat it as a one couple system. But just remember, there is a small moment that may appear in other dimension that you just need to be aware of it and know how to control it. I hope you enjoy another session of Sito channel. Um, please, if you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to press the like button. I also wanted, before you go, I also wanted to uh, share your news. Uh, for those of you that were waiting for the second volume of uh, Mechanotropy book, it will come out in August, in two months from now. Uh, and in future session, I will provide more details how you can obtain that book. Thank you again.